Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two different books on penguins. Both of the books that I will be talking about in this video, I really enjoyed. They both tell stories about these incredible birds. Each book discusses a different species of penguin and also how the author came to be in contact with them. The first book focuses on a very famous species of penguin. That book is called My Penguin Year, Life Among the Emperors by Lindsay McRae. This book was published in 2019 by Mariner Books, which is an imprint of HarperCollins, and My Heart cover copy that I purchased with my own money comes in at 304 pages. This is a memoir written by a wildlife cameraman in which he primarily discusses his 11-month-long trip to Antarctica to film the entire breeding season of this huge colony of emperor penguins on their breeding grounds on top of pack ice. But Lindsay McRae actually starts the story from his very beginning, starting with how he first fell in love with just observing wildlife. But then once he was introduced to recording wildlife on camera, he knew what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. And the number one thing on his bucket list, his number one excursion that he always wanted to do was go to Antarctica to film emperor penguins. So when he got that call, asking him if he would be willing to spend almost an entire year of his life in extreme dangerous conditions away from family and friends, a trip that would require an enormous amount of preparation, he still wanted to go. His girlfriend required a little bit of convincing. She eventually came around to it because she knew how much he wanted to do it. And she was very dedicated to that position because she found out that she was pregnant while Lindsay was still preparing for the trip, meaning that not only was he going to miss the birth of his first child, but also if he decided to go through with this trip, he would miss the first seven months of his child's life. It was an unbelievable sacrifice they both decided they were willing to make in order for Lindsay to go off and have this truly once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And the dedication that he shows during the process of extensive preparation is enough to convince you that, yeah, this is something that he really wanted to do. Not that he didn't have his moments of questioning whether or not he was making the right decision. He definitely had some of those. I mean, the hoops that they made him jump through were crazy. The only thing that I have read that even comes close to that level of preparation is what I read about in Haley Arsenault's memoir called Wild Ride, and she was getting ready to spend three days in space. That exact comparison, going to Antarctica versus going to space, is actually brought up in my Penguin Year, and it's thought that going to space is actually safer than going to Antarctica. And after having read this memoir, I can see why. It is so hard on your body just being there, let alone trying to work there. It's hard on your body. It's hard on your mind. You are so isolated. You don't see the sun for long stretches of time. And then there's the weather, the unbelievable cold, the brutal storms, the dangers of living and working on top of a literal sheet of ice, the dangers of this region are never far removed from the author's mind as he's talking about trying to get all this footage of the penguins. It makes this memoir horrifyingly atmospheric, but it also at the same time makes you admire the emperor penguins all the more because they are fighting these conditions to breed in this area in what is probably the worst time of year to be there. But even though the author had to do so much just to get to Antarctica, and then he had to do even more work just to survive there, let alone to perform the job that he was hired to do, he has this sense of wonder and adventure that's just palpable throughout this memoir. You can feel his excitement about the work he does. He wants to be out there. He's restless to be out there. They had to pay a lot of attention to weather conditions, so he couldn't always be out there with the birds, but he was just itching to get those shots, to be there when those moments happened. He has this little boy sense of excitement to him, and you just feel it throughout this entire book. And it took that amount of love for the work in order to get all the shots that he needed. The weather was often a factor. He often couldn't be out there with the birds. And then when he was, he had to learn a lot on the job. 
he had to learn how to pick up all these different cues from the penguins that they were at different points within the breeding process. Then he had to try to figure out how to set up his camera and capture those. And then there was just dealing with the birds themselves. They are very docile, very sweet creatures, but they're also very curious and often very clumsy on the ice. So he would have his camera pointed at a couple of penguins and another penguin would just come lumbering into his shot and he would have to move it. There are a lot of technical details about capturing things on camera in this memoir, as you would expect. I found that very interesting because I'm someone who uses a camera, as you can see, but I'm not sure everyone would find those types of details as compelling as I did. There are a lot of amusing moments in this memoir. There are a lot of sweet moments in this book as well. I mean, you're dealing with cute little fluffball penguins for part of it. So of course, there are those types of moments. But also, of course, there are a lot of brutal moments as well. Nature can be extremely unkind. And that is definitely the case in what is probably the most inhospitable place on Earth, second maybe only to the inside of a volcano. There were a lot of heartbreaking moments that the author describes in this memoir, and it was clearly very hard on him. He was someone who was there just to observe and capture these moments on film. He needed to be as detached as he possibly could. He couldn't get too close to these animals physically or emotionally, and he needed to interfere as little as possible. But in the end, he did what he came there to do. He captured on camera the creation of a new generation of emperor penguins. And in the process, he got to witness a lot of ordinary but still remarkable penguin behaviors, but then also some rare moments as well. And those were fascinating to learn about. And all of that, all of those moments can be seen on the second episode of the first season of BBC Earth's Dynasties docuseries, which I watched on Discovery Plus after I finished this memoir. And it was amazing. I think I loved it all the more because I learned through this memoir what it took to bring those images into my living room. I think it's really easy for all of us in this day and age to take footage like that for granted because it seems like everything is captured on camera these days. But this book really illuminates what it took to get that footage. And so I definitely appreciated it a whole lot more. I think this memoir brilliantly captures this demanding but also also extremely rewarding experience. The author does such a good job recounting all of these moments. And he really gives us a sense of this continent that I think most of us will probably never visit. I know I certainly will not. So it was great to go there via this book. It was so interesting throughout this memoir, meeting these individual penguins, seeing these moments play out, and then getting to go right after I finished the book and watch the documentary and see some of those same moments play playing out. It was really satisfying. So I definitely recommend this book, but I especially recommend it paired up with that episode that the author worked so hard to create. But something else you could pair this book up with is the other Penguin book that I'm going to discuss in this video, which is called The Penguin Lessons, What I Learned from a Remarkable Bird by Tom Michelle. This book was published in 2015 by Ballantine Books, which is a subsidiary of Penguin Random House. The hardcover comes in at 240 pages, but I actually listened to the audiobook, which I checked out from my library. This book is another memoir, but unlike the previous book, which discussed a huge number of penguins, this book discusses just one penguin. This is the author's story of finding a penguin, rescuing a penguin, and then caring for it. The story goes that in the 1970s, when this author was in his mid-20s, he accepted a job as a teacher at a boarding school in Argentina. And right before term started, he was visiting Uruguay when he came across this large group of Magellanic penguins who had died as a result of an oil spill. And amongst all of those dead penguins, he found one lone survivor, which he took home and cleaned up. But then when he tried to return it to the wild, that penguin refused to leave his side. He decided to name the penguin Juan Salvador, but he was also sometimes called Juan Salvado. And that's important to mention because right at the end of the book, there is this whole question that is posed semi-rhetorically to the reader, wondering whether or not the penguin was savior. 
or saved. It's kind of in the spirit of the who saved whom question that those of us who adopt rescue animals often ask. I should mention this right away because I think it's important to know, and it sometimes does come up when I discuss books like this. This author was not actively seeking out a wild animal to turn it into a pet. It just worked out that way. In fact, there are several different occasions that the author describes in this book where he tried to figure out a way to return Juan Salvador to the wild after that initial attempt, or at least put this penguin into someone's hands who knew more about caring for penguins than he did. But after several attempts, it became clear that the best thing for the penguin was to keep him where he was, and that was with the author. So the author did everything within his power to give this bird the best life he could, this bird who would have most certainly died without his intervention. In this book, we get to hear about the author's hilarious escapades trying to get this bird into Argentina from Uruguay, where he originally found him, and then trying to start a brand new position in a different country with a penguin in tow. But he actually didn't need to worry because everyone at the school absolutely fell in love with Juan Salvador and wanted to help out with him as much as they could. And Juan Salvador seemed to love all of the students and the people at the school as much as they loved him. He almost acted like a puppy. He just soaked up all of their attention. He'd be so eager to greet everyone. And he actually helped out the students in very unexpected ways. He taught them some new rugby moves. And he helped one very shy student come out of his shell and discover his talent for swimming. But this book isn't just about the penguin. It also doubles as a memoir of this author's time spent in South America. There was a very volatile political and economic situation unfolding at the time, so he talks about that. And this author came to South America in the first place because he wanted to have some adventures. So he doesn't just stay put at the school. Other people at the school happily watch Juan Salvador during the author's travels elsewhere on the continent. We get to hear about those and we get to learn just how character building they were for the author. There is a very sad moment toward the end of this book. I'm sure you can guess what that is all about. But overall, this book is equal parts heartwarming and hilarious. The way this author talks, the way he writes, it's like you're over at someone's house for a dinner party and they start telling a story that causes you to way overstay your welcome into the deep hours of the night because you never want the story to end. And if you're a fan of audiobooks, I cannot recommend this audiobook enough. It's narrated by the actor Bill Nye. I had no idea he narrated for audiobooks, but I had fallen in love with his performance as Emma's father in the latest adaptation of Emma by Jane Austen. And when I saw he narrated this, I wanted to give it a try. I am so glad I did. He made a funny book even funnier. The voices he does are perfect. This is now one of my new favorite audiobooks. Even though he was just a small penguin, Juan Salvador was clearly such a character, and this book will make you fall in love with him in the way that the author clearly did, just by the way he speaks about him. And at the end of this book, the author talks about how, after many years, he found some film, he found some footage of Juan Salvador swimming around in the school's swimming pool, and that footage has found its way here to YouTube. I will put that clip in the description box and up in the cards if you want to go watch it. And after you do, if you find yourself charmed by that remarkable little bird, then I can tell you it is well worth your time to pick up this book. So those were two books on penguins that I deeply enjoyed. If you want to read either or both of these books, or if you've read one or both of them and you want to share your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. I'm going to put links to everywhere you can find these books in the description box below if you want to pick up your own copy. If you're on a mobile device, just tap the title of this video and that box will expand for you. And also in that box, I'm going to include something that I like to call the further reading section, where I will list some book titles that you might be interested in if this topic or either of these books intrigued you. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you will see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active, in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <music>